Hello everyone, my name is Alex. I'm one of the expert IELTS teachers here at e2language.com and welcome to your E2 task of the week. Today, we're gonna to work on IELTS reading and I'm gonna share with you three essential strategies that you need to know to do well in IELTS reading. Let's get started. In this class, I'll show you the three IELTS reading strategies and we're gonna do a whole heap of practice with a little bit of match headings and yes, no, not given because I know everybody struggles with those. Now, the first strategy I wanna mention is probably something you're familiar with and that you've heard a lot about. It is skimming. What is skimming? When you're skimming a text, you're trying to answer two questions. What is the text about and how is the text organized? The key with skimming is to do it efficiently. And there are really two different ways to skim. I'm gonna show you both of them, but it's up to you to choose which one works best for you. Now, basically this one involves looking at a text really quickly without reading too slowly or too in depth. And you're just trying to find out what's the text about, how's the text organized. I'm gonna show you two big pages of text and cover the writing as you read. So you have to go quickly. Are you ready? Let's begin, start skimming. Here's the next page. So that was one minute. How did you go? What words did you notice? And did you see how the text was organized? Maybe you saw words like GM, genetic modification, EU, farming, crops, health, environment. Did it help you? Let me show you the other way to skim and see if it's more useful. The second way to skim is by just looking at the introduction and then the first sentence of each paragraph. So we call the first sentence the topic sentence. You would know that from your writing. So we're gonna look at the same text now, just the introduction and the first sentence of each paragraph, and we'll read it together. See if this helps you anymore. Can you see what the text is about and can you see how it's organized? Let's read. My parents researched malnutrition and undernutrition in India, especially among children, and found that many diets recommended by Western nutritionists were in fact completely inapplicable to the poor. So they formulated cheap healthy diets based on indigenous foods which people were familiar, with which people were familiar. Yet despite their many other efforts, a quarter of people in India and nearly one in nine people around the world did not have enough to live a healthy, active life. Then we get into the topic sentences. The World, the World Bank estimates that we will need to produce about 50% more food by 2050 to feed a population of 9 billion people. Just as new agricultural techniques and equipment spurred on food production in the Middle Ages and scientific crop breeding, fertilizers and pesticides did so for the green revolution of the 20th century, so we must rely on the latest technology to boost food production further. Mm, see the writer's opinion there? Views on GM differ across the world. There are outstanding plant scientists who work on GM in the UK, but Scottish, Welsh, Northern Irish governments have declared their opposition to GM plants. About 15 years ago, when GM was just emerging, its main proponents and many of the initial products 
were from large multinational corporations, even though it was publicly funded scientists who produced most of the initial research. By the way, if you're doing this in the reading test, you would be going about that fast, but using your pen or if you're on the computer, you might be scribbling some notes down and thinking about the type of text that you're dealing with. So are you looking at something which is balancing both views, two opposing views? Are you looking at a strong opinion piece? Are you looking at a historical account going from um, the past closer to the present? All of those questions you should be sort of asking yourself and thinking about while you're reading. Because eventually, of course, you've got questions to deal with. Next topic sentence, the debate became polarized and any sense that the evidence could be rationally assessed evaporated. I'm going to show you the next screen here, but I won't read the text out. I'll give you time to do that on your own. So how did you go this time? Do you know what the text is about? Do you know how it's organized? Can you see the writer's opinion? If you now had a bunch of questions, would you know where to look for each question? So for example, if they asked you about um, the health impact or they might ask you about a particular country, would you be able to find that based on your skimming? Now, maybe you found both methods not that helpful. That's just a matter of practice, but hopefully, Either the first method or the second method works for you. And that is the starting point in IELTS reading. Not always, but often you'll skim the text first. Now this brings us to the next strategy. Scanning, again, a word that you've probably heard all the time. Now the question that you're dealing with when you're scanning is, where is it? When you're scanning, you're actually not reading, you're just looking. Think of yourself like a hunter. So you've read a, a question, an IELTS yes, no, not given question. You've got a keyword, maybe it's somebody's name, maybe it's a date, and you're just looking through the text trying to find it. And if you start reading, that's a waste of time. So scanning just means looking or hunting. So you're basically doing this, moving your eye up and down around the page, looking for a particular piece of information. If you've got a good keyword, like a proper noun or a date, then this is obviously much easier. If you're looking for a synonym or an idea, this can take a little bit longer. Let's have a practice. I'm going to give you a word up the top in the blue section, and I want you to find it as fast as you can. This is the word I want you to find, Canada. So scan for Canada as fast as you can. Here we go. Have you got it? It's in the middle column, almost in the middle of the page. Here it is. Let's do another one. This time I want you to scan for the word herbicides. Go. It's in the third column, middle paragraph. There it is. So scanning is pretty fun, but it's also an essential skill when you need to find a section quickly. But once you find that section, that's not the end of the story because then it's the third strategy. And in IELTS reading, this third strategy is actually the most important one and you are required to use it the most often. It is careful reading. You can think of this like slow down. So we've got skimming, scanning and slow down. Careful reading, it's pretty obvious what it is, right? It means that you've got to read the text at the pace that allows you to understand what you're reading. So it's not just reading slowly, you're reading efficiently. So here is where 
You need to think about reading for understanding and breaking those bad habits of returning to the start of a sentence or returning to the start of a paragraph when you finish. It's a very normal thing to do. I do it all the time, but in a language test, there is no time for that kind of lazy reading. So careful reading is efficient reading. Let's look at one paragraph and three headings and work on our careful reading. When we do headings match, we always start with the paragraph rather than the heading. So let's read it together. GM involves the introduction of very specific genes into plants. In many ways, this is much more controlled than the random mutations that are selected for in traditional plant breeding. Most of the commonly grown crops that we consider natural actually bear little resemblance to their wild ancestors, having been selectively modified through crossbreeding over the thousands of years that humans have been farming crops. In this sense, this is a form of genetic modification itself. So then we've got our three headings, modification is nothing new, benefits of crossbreeding and history of farming. Now I saw the word crossbreeding. I saw something about the history of farming, but this paragraph is all about number one, modification is nothing new. If I had been reading too quickly or just skimming or just scanning, I probably would have chosen the wrong answer then. So I was reading at a pace that allows me to understand. And when I'm reading, I'm also reading quite dramatically in my head. My voice is going up and down and I'm emphasizing certain words. That is careful reading. Let's do another one. This time I'll leave it to you. Feel free to pause if you need a little bit longer. I'll show you another paragraph and another three headings. Read carefully. If you were reading carefully, you would know that treating diabetes was mentioned, but it's not the focus of the whole paragraph. Same with number two, cancer was mentioned, but it's not the main idea of this paragraph. It's not a good heading. Number three is the best heading, GM's role in healthcare. So now let's put it all together. I'm gonna to give you a few paragraphs from that text and four yes, no, not given questions. Remember that yes, no, not given questions are asking you about the writer's opinion. So you'll need to probably skim first, then scan for keywords, then slow down and read carefully. Over to you. Pause the recording for two minutes now. Are you feeling confident with your answers? Let's have a look together. Let's start with question one. We've got a really good scanning word here with a capital letter. So Western diets, unsuitable, poor people. You can find this in the first paragraph. Western nutritionists, uh, inapplicable and poor. So in the real test, you'd slow down and read this section really carefully. Let's do it. My parents researched malnutrition and undernutrition in India, especially among children, and found that many diets recommended by Western nutritionists were in fact completely inapplicable to the poor. So they formulated blah, blah, blah. The question is some diets, some Western diets were found to be unsuitable for poor people. Does the text say the same thing? Many diets recommended by Western nutritionists were completely inapplicable to the poor. Some Western diets were unsuitable for poor people. This is the same thing. So this is yes. How about number two? Again, we've got a good scanning word here, US. US corn production has risen considerably in the past half century over here in the text. Past half century, past 50 years, uh, Soar, which is rise considerably, corn and US. We're in the right spot here. So we would slow down and read around. 
The World Bank estimates that we will need to produce about 50% more food by 2050 to feed a population of 9 billion people. And the past 50 years have seen agricultural productivity soar. Corn yields in the US have doubled, for example. So this is the key part. Corn yields in the US have doubled. US corn production has risen considerably. Yes, double is rising considerably in the past half century, the past 50 years. So again, this is, yes, it's saying the same thing as the text. Number three now. Pesticides led to a reduction in food production during the 20th century. So good scan word, pesticide, uh, 20th century is a good one. And we're looking for information about pesticides, reduction, food production. So pesticides appears once over here but it's not near the other words that we need. So see it again here and 20th century. This is the section that we would slow down to read. Let's do it. Just as new agricultural techniques and equipment spurred on food production, this means uh, encouraged or boosted, spurred on food production in the Middle Ages and scientific crop breeding, fertilizers and pesticides did so for the green revolution of the 20th century. So we must rely on the latest technology to boost food production further. Okay, is this saying the same thing? Pesticides led to a reduction in food production during the 20th century. So I know that pesticides did so, as in they spurred on food production. They boosted or increased food production. So pesticides led to a reduction. This is saying the opposite thing, contradiction. This is no. They led to a boost in food production. So finally, question four. Globally, half of all crops grown are GM. Keyword here, globally, half GM. And we're looking here in the final section, the final paragraph we've got. Views on GM differ across the world. Almost half, here we go, almost half of all crops grown in the US. So this is not globally, this is the US. Are GM, whereas widespread opposition in Europe means virtually no GM crops are grown there. In Canada, regulation is focused on, and then I speed up a little bit. Can I see anything about worldwide, globally? GM is merely a technology. So once I've read all of this, I can see that actually there's no information about how much of global crops are GM. So there's no way for me to know this information which means it's not given. So here we have it, yes, yes, no, and not given. So hopefully you found those strategies useful. Let's just review them one more time. In your test, you should skim for the overall idea and structure, scan when you're looking for specific information, and then slow down and read carefully. You can employ these techniques when you're just reading for fun as well. Websites like National Geographic, New Scientist and The Conversation, where this article comes from, are great places to work on your reading skills. For more IELTS preparation, join us on e2language.com. We're 100% online. You can submit your work for writing and speaking feedback. You can come along to our live group classes and work with me and our other language experts. And you can book a one-on-one -on -one tutorial to work with your teacher in person. Our teachers are all over the world, so you can always find a time that suits you. And our course, of course, is online, so you can practice as much as you want, wherever you want and whenever you want. I'll see you soon on e2language.com. Bye.